Hello, welcome back to Feline Varker Art. In this video, I'm going to show how I made my mermaid doll. I know it's June and I'm late, but life has been insane lately. I drew up this concept sketch. I've never done a mermaid doll before, and I wanted to have a clear direction. My youngest son is particularly fond of sharks, and when we were looking at images online, he was most attracted to the tiger shark. I decided to borrow a lot of the shark's features, especially the eyes and its color story. The fins are just a fun fantasy flair. As always, I begin by prepping the doll. I tie off the hair, cut it short, scrape out the remaining plugs with a flathead screwdriver, and pull all the gunk out with pliers. This doll is one of the older releases, so she has elastic hips and they're so worn out, but that's okay because I won't be needing them. I cut the elastic and save the legs for a future project. Now to clean her face off. This time I wanted to try nail polish remover that had acetone as the main ingredient. The idea was that I wouldn't dry my hands out as much. It did feel nicer on my skin, but I could tell right away that it felt odd. It made the paint gummy and I think it just smeared it around instead of actually dissolving it. And the more I tried, the worse it got. So it's back to my tried and true industrial acetone brand. Much better. I'll probably just use gloves in the future if I'm worried about dry skin. For her hair, I wanted something that could look like it's floating underwater. Yarn is great for shorter lengths and for fluffier styles. I cut out a nice pile of eight inch strands. If I can get the right color in a chunky yarn, I'll always get that instead of a smaller yarn. It tends to be much softer and usually makes creating the wefts much faster and more pain-free. Next, I unravel the strands. Then I grab either end and start pulling them apart. I lay the pulled fibers back over themselves and repeat until all I have left is loose fiber. I do this until I think I have enough hair. Nice and poofy. Next, I take my rerouting tool from the doll planet and start plugging the hairline. After the hairline is full, I work my way around the head and I keep plugging until there are no more visible bald spots. Then I fill the head with Fabri-Tac glue, squish it around, and use a cotton swab to make sure all the hair inside is coated. To begin constructing the tail, I take some craft wire and run it through the space left over from the elastic. Then I twist it to make it thicker and sturdier. I curl the end with jewelry pliers and pinch it. I don't want a sharp end that will poke through the finished tail. When I'm done, I have an armature that is slightly longer than the original legs of a Monster High doll. To reinforce the wire, I wrap it once in painter's tape. Then I make a second pass under the pelvis to bulk it up a bit. Now to pad the tail. I take some leftover plastic wrap and encase the tail with it. I tape this in place as I go to make wrapping the tail easier. Several passes are needed to build up the shape. This is one of the few times where I bought new fabric for a custom. I needed something close to the original color of the doll, but that would still work with the concept drawing and that had a bit of a stretch. I pin a piece of the fabric around the tail. I draw the pattern directly onto the fabric. This material doesn't have a clear right or wrong side and I'm not worried about pencil marks being left behind so I'm just using regular number two pencil. I release the clips and trim the fabric down based on my guides. I leave a little extra room for seam allowance when cutting the fabric. 
I double check that the stretch is going in the proper direction before continuing. For the fins, I freehand the pattern based on my drawing. Two pieces for the tail fins, two pieces for the hip fins, and one long strip for the back of the tail. I cut two pieces of fabric for each fin. I use fabric glue to sew the fins together. I wanted to avoid any stitches here and I didn't have room to turn them right side out. The rough edges actually kind of work with the design and the glue spots will be painted over later, so it's okay. Each fin gets sewn to the tail. The hip fins are sewn to the wrong side and folded over to the right side. The back fin is sewn to the right side, similar to how cuffs are sewn onto a sleeve. The tail fin is sewn upside down to the right side, just like sleeves are sewn to a shirt. I use a ladder stitch to sew the tail to the padded base. actually looks better than I thought it would, and it poses nicely too. I mix up some acrylic paint and start working on the white underbelly. For blending the colors and softening transitions, spray some water from a misting bottle. This lets the paint spread out naturally into the fibers. It's hard to tell on camera, but this is a light blue-gray. It's almost like Laguna's original skin tone, but it's a little lighter. Off camera, I give the torso a rough pass with the underbelly color. Using my Jane Davenport pastels and an applicator, I start blushing the body. I believe I did this without spraying the body with MSC, but it does get a coat when the pastels are all finished. I work on the tail at the same time as the torso. Deeper navy blue gets applied around the fins to ease the transition and up the back to blend the tail into the body more. I was actually pleasantly surprised at how well the fabric took the pastels. I was able to do some blending and the color didn't come off on my hands or smudge later. Face up time. As usual, I pin a scrap cloth around the head and rubber band the hair out of the way. Laguna already has very large eyes, but the eyes in my concept are very round. So I start by drawing outside of the mold. I'm using relatively dark pencil to sketch here, but I'm pressing very lightly, so erasing isn't too difficult if a mistake is made. Just like when sketching on paper, I lay out guides for where everything will be. I'm actually more comfortable outlining the eyebrows with pencils than I am using pastels. I think you should try different ways of doing things to find out what works best for you. It's okay if it's not how someone else does it. Using my pastel pencils, I start filling in some of the base colors. I alternate back and forth between pastels and watercolor pencils on each layer. I block out the shark markings with pastels. The applicator puts down a much thicker layer, so it doesn't take as much to build up color. You can also use a cotton swab, but I like the way these feel. I use a brush to apply thinner layers of pastels. Using a very dark brown, I outline the irises and do some shading. I use a deep blue pastel pencil to deepen the bags under her eyes and to add dimension to her ear fins. I continue defining the shading on the eyes and the corners of her mouth. I want her eyes to draw the most attention so they get the most work to make them feel more 3D. With pastel pencils, it's easy to undo something if you don't like it, just wipe it away. 
but this does mean that you have to be careful not to smudge it until you do another layer of sealant. I fluff up her eyebrows with dark blue watercolor pencils and deepen the eye sockets even more with pastels. Using white, I highlight the brow bone and clean up the shape of the markings around the nose. Time to add her stripes. I know tiger shark stripes are much softer and less green than this, but she is still a fantasy creature and aesthetics one in the end. I think this is the third layer and I'm just going in and adding highlights to bring out the raised surfaces more and to even further deepen the shadows. Outlining the stripes makes them pop more. I kept going back and forth about giving her creases in her lips. I like it, but I don't wanna bring too much attention away from the eyes. I like the idea of water ripples reflecting off of her forehead, but also decided not to push this concept too much. I switched to acrylics and brighten up the catch lights in the eyes. I also highlight the cupid's bow and the edge of the upper eyelid. Then I clean up the edges of the eyes with black and give the upper lip a coat of dark green. I use the same green around the eyes and again to make the stripes more solid. I mix a light yellow to add a few hairs to the eyebrows. And then I neaten the edges with a black watercolor pencil. I gloss her eyes and lips with Sculpey Gloss after a final coat of UV Cut MSC. Time to reunite the head with the body. It's been a while since I've seen that hair. When I create a character, I typically have a rough idea of the world they live in and their role there, but I don't usually go beyond that. I haven't been able to come up with a name for the Mershark yet. What do you think she should be called? I'd love to hear some of your ideas. Let me know in the comments below. Like this video if you like this video and subscribe if you wanna see more. Bye.